What are your fears? Do you have any? Well, it's pretty rare that you do not. Most people have a phobia or a fear that they cannot get over or they have not tried to get over. So I'm going to go over some of the top 10 human phobias. Now every, every human is wired differently. It doesn't matter if you have a twin. There's going to be something that is different. And I think that goes for a lot of species, if not all. Uh, for example, dogs. You know, they may look identical. They may look the same to somebody that doesn't know dogs, but they all have their own little personalities and that you could even if they looked identical to each other you could tell them apart by just their traits and how they act now, humans are the same way and there's there's certain things that trigger phobias in humans and some people get so terrified they you know they can't deal with it and some people can get over these things by doing these things uh, I don't know if that works. I don't really have many that I've been willing to do anything like that for. But we have them. And some people have a lot of them. And some people have them worse than others. And so let me get my mouse in the right screen. So we're going to go over some of them. And, and I'll tell you if that bothers me or not. And we'll go from there and let's try to get this top 10 uh, knocked out in a timely fashion. Number one. And not no particular order. It doesn't mean that it's the number one thing. I'm just going off my list. Number one. Public speaking. It says most of us are self-conscious enough when we leave the house, often perceiving that people are watching us. Well... They are watching us these days. Yes, they are. Judging us for fashion. Uh, some extra holiday weight around the middle. Well, ain't too many people judging for that now. Yeah, everybody's got a little extra holiday weight. So imagine the tension if all eyes are on you. So this popular fear leads to an equally popular bit of advice. Just imagine your whole audience is naked. Wow. I don't know that may not be a pleasant thought looking out in the hundreds or thousands of people imagining them naked not today maybe in the 60s it would have been a nice thing to imagine but not now mm -mm. I don't think I've been put in too many situations where I had to do any kind of public speaking other than in the military and by the time I had to do that in the military I'd you know, I was over that fear. Uh, they have a good way of getting that out of you. But I really haven't had any situations where I had to get up to a podium and talk to a group of people. I mean, I'm talking to you now, but this is not the same. I can't see you. There's thousands of people watching me, but I can't see any of you. So I don't really have that fear. And I can always go back and, and edit things out of, that I don't like. But if I had to get in front of an auditorium today, I don't think I would have any trouble with it. Not, not you know, you just never know until you're in that situation. But I don't think that would give me a problem. I, I think I'm, I think you kind of grow out of that one as you age. You get more confident with yourself. Uh, yeah, I was a shy kid, you know. I wouldn't have done it at 10 years old. I would have been terrified. I didn't like, we had plays in school, and I didn't like getting on stage in front of people. Uh, but, but a lot of that is you haven't had time to build your confidence in yourself yet. And I don't think that would be something, I, you know, a lot, most of us aren't really ever put in that situation where we have to talk publicly. And unfortunately, the ones who are good at that, they can get up there and talk, you know, we know who those people are, and they're not to be trusted. So think about that one. Number two, heights. Coming from a guy who has fallen off ladders several times doing this renovation on my cabin, 
I don't dig them. I don't dig heights, but I don't fear them. And if I feared them, I would have never, never took flying lessons. I would never become a pilot. There is a fear. I think any fears I might have ever had of, of heights was, was wiped out when I did start flying. Uh, getting on my roof up here. Now, that's, that's pretty scary because it's hard to get your footing. You know if you fall, you're screwed. You're going to get hurt, and if you don't, it's a miracle. Oh, what's it say about that? Anything interesting? Nothing we can't talk about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says ladders are one of the biggest fear of heights. So, and, and rightfully so. Because if you, you know, any of us who have spent any time on a ladder has either had a close call or fallen off. Um, have you ever got on a stepladder? And thought you were on the bottom step but you weren't you were up one maybe two and you stepped down and you were up higher than you thought and you fell well that will invoke some kind of fear into you even though you weren't that high uh yeah it's saying vacation places the grand canyon i've been there um i gave my mother and grandmother <laughs> almost give them a coronary there because in the Grand Canyon, even in the places where tourists pull in, they got these rocks you can walk out on. There's no no guardrails, nothing. And I'd walk out onto the ledge and look over, and they're back there screaming for me to get off there. Uh, Empire State Building, I've never been up in that. Uh, I did go up in the Stratosphere Tower in Las Vegas. Now, that's... When you get up into something, a building that that's hot, that's that high, you go out on the observation deck, man, you can feel that whole building swaying, and that's kind of a, and they're built that way to do that, but that's not a, a nice feeling to have when something is swaying in the wind, but I think the fear of heights is something most people can get over, and then, and that's also something else that probably comes with age. Some people never get over it. Uh, I don't know. Number three. This is one, yes, that I'm going to have to face real soon. My teeth are terrible. You guessed it. Going to the dentist. Well, there's good reason for fearing going to the dentist. Because it freaking hurts. I don't care how much numbing stuff they put in you. It hurts. If you've ever went in there to get a tooth pulled, especially the back ones, it hurts. There ain't enough drugs in that needle to make that a pleasant experience. And I have never done the where they put me out for the that's my brother's fault. He went to the dentist, they gave him the gas, and he almost they had to call the ambulance. He I don't remember exactly what happened, but it didn't go well. So being that I'm blood kin to him and his brother I can't choose that option, even though it may not hurt me at all. But yes, going to the dentist sucks. And I know what's coming. i got to get my teeth ripped out and get fake ones. At least in the front. I'm missing a tooth here. That happened right after I started my channel. Uh, I hit myself with a wrench. Right here. I was working on something. I had the wrench on a nut. And it slipped off. It busted me right in the middle tooth. And it never recovered. Um, and then I lost that tooth. And then I lost one down here. I'm not going to show them. I lost one in the middle down here as well. And those two teeth on the bottom grew together. So now i got a big gap. It looks like there never was a tooth there. But there is. But very soon I'm getting all these yanked out. And getting. I don't know what I'm getting yet. You know. I don't know. I don't know about. I don't want any. Whatever's the quickest. And gets me out of there, man. I don't care. I'll take them out and put them in a jar. I hear that about my teeth all the time. Believe me, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So going to the dentist, yes, that, and needles. You know, they put those, in, and, I, and I used to have a big fear of needles. I don't even know if this is on the list. But I don't have that anymore. Because I know the needles are going to help. Can you imagine going to the dentist like in the 1800s when they didn't use nothing but booze? How bad that hurt. And you would actually go to the, uh, where was it? You would go to the post office or something and they double as a dentist. Uh, 
and you've probably seen the primitive tools they used <laughs> you know a lot of people died get a tooth you get an infected tooth you know couldn't get couldn't get it pulled out you know they can kill you but yes going to the dentist i think all of us deep down i've never met anybody that says oh man i get to go to the dentist today dentist number four i definitely do not have this one because i deal with them very often snakes snakes are terrible looking they're spooky for good reason they will if you get a venomous snake bite your chances are you know if it's a rattlesnake you you got you got a slim chance i would say it depends where you live if i get bit by a rattlesnake here they may have some anti-venom at the hospital but chances are they'll have to life flight me out of here take me to either little rock or fort smith because they're just not equipped for stuff like that here but i, I do believe they have anti-venom for for copperheads and for rattlesnakes now if i'm going to be bit by a poisonous snake or a venomous snake rather it's going to be a copperhead because you know i've seen my dogs get bit by them and it swells up but it other than that it doesn't phase them much so they're if you're going to get bit by a snake uh you you need to know if you live around snakes you need to know first aid what to do uh there's a lot of bad information out there on what to do when you get a snake bite i'm not going to give medical advice here uh just don't get bit be aware of where you're walking if you live in a snake area uh be aware where you're walking if you're going in tall weeds wear high boots you you see me out there weed eating i'm always wearing them boots uh they're not they're not good looking things to look at and they're they're just creepy i get them in my house at least once a year i've already had that happen a couple months ago it wasn't even that long ago uh <laughs> he got in the bathroom you see my door back there it's shut so i open that door it opens inward i go where to where the toilet is turn around to do my business and i look to the right of me and there he is in the corner big old five foot rat snake and it, i didn't i didn't kind of i didn't didn't really scare me i'm just i was kind of shocked to see him there i'm like man i walked right by him they will bite you i got bit by one uh, last week we're getting it out of the chicken pen but not venomous Here's one that goes with heights, flying. There are tons of people that are scared to death to fly. Even though that is one of the safest modes of transportation, people just refuse. They will not fly. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that if you crash, you're in a jet at 30,000 feet, and you crash, you're dead. You are not surviving that that i cannot i cannot imagine being in a nosedive from that height knowing what's coming and it would probably last for minutes five you know the pilot's going to try to gain control he's not going to be able to you're going to be tortured with what's going on in your mind for all that time so there's good reason people are afraid of flying uh plane crash when a plane does crash it's very well publicized so that invokes fear in a lot of people i've been flying since i was a small child uh when my grandparents if they didn't drive down to pick us up in oklahoma to take with us for the summer then we would fly there young i remember flying young eight nine years old we would fly into Chicago. Some they would have somebody meet us. We would it just me and my brothers, two younger brothers. We would fly, no adults, but airlines would have people waiting on us to get us to where we had to be. Uh, they took care of passengers back then. They don't do that anymore. But yeah, I've never had the fear of flying. I you know there I've been on some flights, especially if I've been in the plane, you know, a smaller plane that were that were kind of spooky. But most of the time, it's a very safe mode of transportation. But some people will probably never get over that. 
some people get sick. It's a real fear. Here's another one. Spiders and insects. I don't think, I think most of us don't, don't like that. I am not a fan of spiders. Not a fan of spiders, but I'm not terrified. I don't have a phobia about them. Um, very often I'll be sitting right where I'm sitting and I'll see one crawl across the wall and I will annihilate it. It came into my space. I don't like killing anything, but it will not survive. I'm not going to catch it in a jar and release it. If it's a tarantula, I will, but I've never had a tarantula get in my house. There are tarantulas outside. Those we used to find all the time as kids. You cannot hardly find one anymore. They're like going extinct. Along with the horny toads. If you don't know what a horny toad is. I haven't seen one of them since I was a child. I don't know what happened to them. But. Yeah spiders. Another thing for good reason. If they get on you and bite you. a lot of Some of them can do some real damage. A black widow. Brown recluse, you don't want to be bit by those. Daddy long legs, they don't bother me. If I see one in the house, I let him do his, I let him go about his business. They'll eat other things. Um, they just, you know, other insects, yes, I hate flies. But flies are necessary. A lot of people don't understand what flies' purpose is. Well, God put everything on the earth for a purpose. I think flies take care of waste right dead dead and decay it somebody's got to eat that stuff let the flies handle it but we don't enjoy them in the house and right around springtime they get really bad here i hang these fly strips don't know if you can see there's one back here but they work really well i haven't had to deal with a fly in my house in a long time but i do know if a fly lands on my food whatever it landed on i'm either cutting that pe section out or i'm tossing it i will not eat it because i know that fly was just out there a little bit ago you know sunbathing on waldo's poop i ain't eating it mm -mm. enclosed spaces well i don't have that fear because i'm in a little enclosed space here i got a small house that's an enclosed space but a lot of people cannot stand they're claustrophobic Cannot stand to be closed up. They they get violent, violently scared if they are shut up in a small place. Never had the fear. I actually love being in a little, you give me a phone booth and I'm happy. I'll get in that phone booth and if I can, and, and there may have been a time or two where I, I spent a few hours in a phone booth sleeping. And, you know, that's another story. But I don't mind small spaces. I actually get a good feeling when I'm, you know, in a small space. Not that I go sit in my closet or anything, but it, is, it doesn't bother me. But some people, they just, you know, they can't handle that. Maybe that came from sleeping in a drawer or something when they were a baby. I don't know. Mice. And let's add rats to that. Don't like them. Don't want them in my house. And when you live in the country, you got to deal with them. And that is a fear that is rightful. Right, rightful. Rightfully so. They are nasty. They carry diseases. They too are necessary. You know, they eat things that nothing else wants to eat other than their buddies to fly. And, you know, I'm not questioning why they're here, or why they were created. Just stay the hell out of my house. Once in a while, i got to deal with them. Trap them. They don't survive. I don't catch and release rats or mice. And that one we don't need much discussion on, because I think we all agree that, no, we don't like them. All right, we got two more here, guys. And this, this next one, i got to read this just to understand this. Dogs. People are afraid of dogs. And I'll probably have to... They may be man's best friend, but dogs also embody a certain amount of fear, usually linked to traumas surrounding an attack in childhood. 
Fear of dogs have plagued people well into adulthood. Unfortunately, a dog that is prone to attack will only be encouraged uh -huh, to do so by your, by your panic state, making this particular fear one of the most legitimate. People in this classification may find the classic Disney film Old Yeller surprisingly uplifting. Do you know I have never seen that movie in my life? I know, Dog Man. I have never seen Old Yeller. Maybe I'll have to seek that out and watch it. I heard you cry. If you see a stray dog and you start running... It is the instinct of that dog to chase you, okay? You may have just continued walking right up to that dog and it would just be wagging its tail and nothing would have happened. But if you tuck tail and run, well, that's the instinct that dogs have is to hunt, to chase. They love it. They may think it's a game. Some of them may not. That is the worst thing to do. The best thing to do, if you don't know if it's hostile which 95, 98.9% .9 of the time, they are not. Most of the time, they're more scared of you than you are of it. You just stand there. You just stand there. It also helps sometimes if you get down low, get on a knee, put your head down a little bit. That dog should usually come right to you. Now, Millie, that didn't work with her. She was scared of humans. Um, something had happened in the two years when I seen her the first time. She was not, she was not fearful of people. And then a, a year later, in between that time, something had happened. And when she showed up here, you couldn't get near her. Now, she's just a lovable, playful dog that, you know, she's over it. But nobody should ever be afraid of dogs. Now, if they are running in a pack... And they've been running with a pack for a while, which I see here a lot. That that could be bad, especially if they're not being cared for or fed. Uh, a pack of dogs, they revert back to their instincts. That's to hunt, kill, and eat. So a pack of dogs is very dangerous. Do not ever approach a pack of wild dogs. And they have them in, in cities too. People will discard dogs. Um... Pit bulls, they get a really bad rap. They were some of the sweetest dogs I ever cared for in the shelter. I'm talking about flies. Got a gnat. But there are a lot of them are trained to do bad things. And I'm not going to get into that. Here's one now that I think I could attest to. Thunder and lightning. Now, I don't know if it's just me. But it seems when we get thunderstorms here now, they are so much worse than they ever used to be. And I've had some very close calls here with lightning. I've, I've, I was outside, one hit the tree in the back, killed it. Actually took out three trees. They're, the others died later. But that's a legitimate fear with the way the weather is going today. Thunder doesn't really scare me, but thunder is the after effect of lightning. What did I, Beetlejuice that thing? Say, talk about it, and it came. But I have noticed in the last 10 years how, you know, bad storms have gotten to be. So that that's a legitimate fear. Uh, but there's nothing we can do about it. Just make sure you live in a place that's, you know, secure. And if light, lightning happens, it happens. But it's your, your chances... Of getting hit by lightning are, are pretty slim. Pretty slim. But don't don't push the limits. Alright. Well, there's ten things. Hopefully we didn't go too long. Put in the comments what's your biggest fear. And why? Or do you know why? Would you like to get over it? I don't know. My biggest fear right now is that I'm out of bacon. I think there's another pack. But it would be in the freezer, because I forgot to take more out. And that's a lot of work to thaw that out. I know I got eggs, but if I'm out of bacon, it ain't going to be a good day. Thanks for watching.
Happy trails.